It's a beautiful day up here in central New York. We're in Homer. It's very cold out, it's snowing, it's windy, but we're gonna head inside and warm up real quick. I don't believe in coats. One day I'm gonna have a coat on for one of these intros, but I'm braving it now. We're checking out one of the newest tap rooms to open up in central New York. We're gonna find out what's on tap at Homer Hops Brewing. Across the nation, people have turned the hobby of crafting beer into a lifestyle. Amazing breweries are only a few minutes away from your own home. From nano to regional, or micro to macro, the question you won't need to ask is what's on tap? Homer House Brewing started up just a few years ago, distributing beer locally to restaurants and bars, but it wasn't until this past year that they finally opened up a place. Yeah, it was June of 2020, and despite trying to start up in the middle of a global pandemic, Homer Hops was finally able to find a home. We're on site now. Let's go talk to a couple of the owners and see what this place is all about. Sounds good. Homer Hops. Talk a little bit before we got started recording here. You know, when did you guys get started? When did we get started, Sean? Well, <laughs> we started how many years ago? It was so, let's see, a long, long time ago. It was uh, at least 10 years ago, maybe. My wife bought a beer kit. How it all kind of began, yeah. Just like, hey. And then uh, that kind of faded away, and then we, uh, we started growing hops out back, playing around with that idea. And then uh, Sean said, Sean started, he wanted to learn how to brew from scratch. And neither one of us knew how to do it. I had a buddy that knew how to do it, so we invited him up one time in the barn. Up, uh, I live next door at the house next door, so we um, brought him over. He showed us how to brew from scratch. Mm -hmm. Smoked some chicken wings. Smoked some chicken wings. Yeah, <laughs> had a good day that day. Yeah, that's a good day. Sounds like a good yeah, day. Yeah, <laughs> a good day. Can't drink the beer right away, though. You no, know? no, we have to be patient yeah, with that. Yeah. But that's how we, that's how it kind of, started right there in the barn at the house next door. Yeah, and I was amazed how the beer came out, you know, at that time. I hadn't really had a whole lot of craft beer and I was shocked how good it was and very pleased that we made it, you know. Was it kind of at that point you decided we should probably do a brewery or something? No, probably no, no, actually, no, no, no. no. How many, so how many year, years ago was the first scratch brew? Oh, geez, four. Four or five years ago? Yeah. yeah. Not too far. No, no, no. no, no. Not crazy yeah. long, no. And then, you know, because I was so impressed by how it came out, we, we bottled it. You know, we had a carboy, we put it in and fermented it and bottled it. And uh, we split the bottles and they ran out quick. I tried to keep a, keep a hold of them as long as I could, but they were so good, we just drank them. This is a, light, kind of beer this was a light pale ale, yeah. just an yeah. easy drinking pale ale, and it came out really good. And then, I got obsessed with it a little bit and I started researching and watching videos and and uh, Jason and I built some stuff that is up there. Yeah, our first uh, <laughs> fermenter, and, uh, yeah, our, our first uh, mash, mash ton and our first hot liquor tank are those igloo coolers. That's amazing. That's, 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 that's wow. a cool one. <laughs> <laughs> a little spout on yeah. it. Yeah, and I, you know, we did, we did the mash ton together and then I bought the igloo to make the hot liquor tank for for uh, sparging, you know, I have like made a little thing for sparging and a coil of copper up there is our work cooler, yeah. our, our work chiller. We're yeah. chilling our work with that. So we did, I did that for a few years. Jason kind of stepped away from it for a little while, and then he got back into it with me. But we started noticing how good our beer was, and we were getting a lot of compliments. And I think he already had it in the back of his head a little bit. He wanted to put something on this property. I did. I was, I was thinking, I, I have all this land here, and I didn't know what to do with it. That's when me, my brothers, and my sister first decided we were going to grow hops, and we were like, well, let's grow some hops back here, and so we played around with that for a while, but we really needed to do something here, so, and yeah, this, this brewery was pretty much destined to be on this property, I think. You got the area in here, too. I mean, the one thing I noticed right away is, I mean, I love, love the decorations for the year, time of year. This is going to be an episode that's coming out uh, end of January-ish, so oh, okay. Christmas will be long gone. But uh, just to come in here, you got the, the stage is awesome. I mean, I, first, like I said, when I walked in and talked to you guys, I'm like, Man, I can see, a, you can put a full band up there. Not just, you know, a guy with a guitar, which is always great too. I, I love acoustic stuff, but you can have a full band up there. And this would really be an awesome place. And it's like, once COVID is over, this is gonna be awesome. And it's like, 
I'm, I'm, I'm excited thinking about that because I'm like, yeah. that's, that is a trip. Yeah. It's easy to drive up here on 81. I mean, you got the shirts too, right off exit 12. Right. It is yeah. real easy to get here. Well, that was our vision. We had one of our partners, five of us, five partners, yep. and one of our partners is a um, musician and he's pretty well known around the area. He, he has a duo and they do a lot of 90s alternative rock covers awesome. and they're really good. And uh, so that was, we had that in mind, you know. We wanted this to be a, a venue for musicians. And yeah, and we actually have it so that when musicians play up there, they can plug into that audio over there and we can actually play it outside. Because oh, a lot of people were complaining they couldn't see the band because we'd be yeah. so full in here and with the COVID restrictions, they couldn't come in. So they were sitting outside and like, we can't hear the music. So we made it so they could, we could, the outside speakers can play whoever's playing in here. One thing I noticed too with coming in here, the quality of this place too. All this wood, is this something that was, is this custom? Like did you have someone make all this? It <laughs> so looks, these it looks tape, like it's the, the, barn wood almost. Well, th there's a lot of barn wood in here. The stage background is barn wood and behind the bar is all barn wood. That was our first purchase. The very first purchase. It was barn wood. Yep, we bought that <laughs> before we even had a. Yeah. That was our here. first major purchase right there. It's a barn and uh, so we bought that, <laughs> and these tables were made, the long tables were made by the same person who supplied the barn wood. These round tables are actually just electrical spools, because I'm, uh, oh, I'm that, during the day I'm an electrician. Yeah. So these came from work, and my brother, who's behind the bar right now, uh, burnt the wood and finished them off. Yeah, him and his girlfriend, Michelle, they, uh, they did all the burning. So Super see cool. The doors, the doors yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. 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 So a lot of this was, you know, you know, what can we do here to make this more homey and Yeah, because that's inviting. kind of the vibe I feel like that the place is giving off. Just the place, come in, hang out, you're welcomed right away. Everybody kind of come in, just a good hangout spot. Yeah. Everybody can meet up. Oh yeah. What are some of the flagships you're seeing here? What are some of the popular? Well, right now. This season, the yeah. that one right there, that people that's, are really buying that. Yeah, that's our top seller of the month so far is the applesauce. But a lot of people just come in more for flights. They want to try everything. Yeah. They can't wait to try it all. So, but our overall best seller is our blonde, which is my least favorite recipe. But <laughs> <laughs> we have other light beers that I like. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not opposed to light beers, but my favorite is our Cold Brook Cream Ale, named after a, a road right here in Homer. Um, but yeah, that's a popular one. There's, there's a few that we keep in stock all the time. Uh, resin fossils, pretty popular one, our amber. People are gonna come in for a new place, so they wanna try everything. That's great to get everything out there. And you talked about that not being your favorite. So what is what is your favorite beer that you brew here? Um, I guess maybe my am the amber here, the resin fossil. Um, but it goes back and forth. I like this, I like some of our IPAs. Um, uh, if I'm in a mood for a light beer, like I said, the Cold Brook Cream Ale, yeah. that's one of my favorites. That's my favorite. I don't have a favorite, but they're my go-tos, depending say. on what kind of beer I'm in the mood my for. My favorite? Yeah. Probably our chocolate coconut porter. Oh, really? That sounds good. Yeah. I saw it on there. I'm like, I'm going to yeah. go with this for now. I'm, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking we're going to get this somewhere. That All sounds right. really good. Yeah. And how often are you guys coming up with new beer ideas, or do you kind of have a pretty steady list? I just mentioned to him this morning, I go, I got this idea for one, and he goes, yeah, I go, but it's too late now, I wanted it for Christmas time, and by the time we make it, it, it wouldn't be ready, but, you know, and he's like, well, we can do this and that and whatever, so, I don't know, we, we've been slowing down a little bit now because we weren't sure what was going to happen with COVID, and what's next? I know this, this was what's next, was what happened here, but uh, is there any more plans of what you're trying to do? Oh, definitely. We, we definitely want to utilize our outdoor space. We want to have this a, a venue for weddings and, and um, you know, bigger shows, bigger concerts. We want to build an outdoor stage. And so we, we definitely have plans. Yeah, we have people calling. We, we actually rent the space out for private parties now yeah. because it's big enough for people to be able to do that and still follow all the guidelines that they have in place right now. Talk a lot about the beer. I want to go see where it's made. Let's go up to you guys can we step back to the brewery sure. absolutely yeah. let's go we have a uh, five barrel system we we have uh, a 10 barrel hot liquor tank so we're able to do double batches in a day if we need to direct fire yeah direct fire um, propane direct fire uh, we got it from ultimate brew service in rochester he's a young guy and he's, he's helped us out tremendously um, we're real happy with with him. He does a lot of work with a lot of breweries around here. He's really good. We actually we were debating on what size to get. We weren't sure if we wanted to do five or seven and a half. And uh, then we're, because we didn't know what was going to happen. Are we going to explode, be super busy? Everybody's going to want us to build, you know, brew more, brew more, brew more. And 
So we thought, well, if we did the five barrel system and we got the five barrel and 10 barrel fermenters, that at least we could jump to double batching with the 10 barrels. And then if we have to get a bigger system, we already got a couple of the 10 barrel fermenters already. We already got the 10 barrel hot liquor tank. We're kind of, you know, stepping over the, the, the odd seven and a half barrel uh, size. So it kind of worked out good. And then we brought our old system over, which we have that two barrel fermenter and a couple of single barrel uh, tanks over there and whatnot, so. Yeah, from our old system. You talk about, oh, how often are you in here brewing? You know, you guys got full-time jobs other than this, so, and everyone has something to do. Is it just you guys doing the brewing here? Um, no, um, well, most of the time it's us brewing, but once in a while, if I can't help Sean or Sean can't be here to help me, the other three guys that are part of the, are part of the company, they'll come over and help uh, brew. But for the most part, it's Sean in here brewing, I'm helping Sean, or if I got a, a new recipe, Sean's coming over and helping me with that brew. But um, either way, it's for the most part, the two of us in here. Yeah. We're trying to, we're teaching those three how to, how to brew is uh, been challenging because we're all, like you said, we all have full-time jobs. So getting over here all the time is not always the easiest right. thing for everybody. We can't have everyone here brewing yeah, that's... all the time. During the summer, during the peak hours, peak time, we're here, here, we've done two or three brews in a week. In a week, yeah. And we'd be here um, late. Yeah, it was tough. Some days we do it on a Sunday when we're a little slower. We have three guys working. One of us will be out here brewing, and the other one will step in to help out. And so we just kind of make it work try to our schedule. Try to make the weekends our double batch brews if we were doing a, a 10 barrel. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that, and then on a weeknight we we do the five barrel. We've been talking about the beer. What do you got right now fermenting in here? And we'll move over here as well. Well, right now this is our pale ale. It's it's done. It's just uh, sitting in here until we get more room in our cooler. Well, well, <laughs> we that's good. Have, <laughs> we don't want to take up too much space in our cooler. Got one ready. So this is ready. This is ready to, to keg. So for like I said, our two barrel here. And that's uh, Patsy's Quest. That's our coconut chocolate porter that we have in there. And that one right there is the saison. Um, we're gonna add cranberry. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. So we're gonna have yeah. cranberry uh, saison. And then the one next to it's empty. That's our IPA uh, negative ions just came out of that recently. So, and uh, like I said, we're pretty full back there. So we're, don't have to brew too much anymore right now. It's a good problem to have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna worse. just sell our inventory right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It gives you guys a little bit of a rest here. Yeah, you know? yeah, much needed rest. Anything future planning here for you guys? You know, what are some beers you're looking to do? Well, we have some of our popular IPAs that people keep asking for every weekend. Uh, Silver Fox is one of them. And uh, Mother's Day is another, it's a hazy New England IPA. And the Silver Fox is more of a traditional IPA, um, but they're both really popular and we keep getting asked for those. So those will probably be our next IPAs. You know what we haven't made in a while? We probably can make our uh, chocolate coffee stout. Like, yeah, ooh, that sounds good. Sweet Mama's Java. Yeah. yeah, we haven't made that in a while. And um, we'd, we'd like to do a, 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 a lager. Yeah. So I think maybe maybe after Christmas we'll, um, well it's do slow. a double batch maybe and just light a lager in one of our tanks here for a couple months and it'll be ready for springtime. Well, there you go. Yeah. 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 Someone look forward to. Everything sounds good, guys. Looking forward to finally tasting these. What do you think? I think we should head out to the bar. Yeah. I think it's time for us. Four, four. four. So pour four here, guys. Where are we starting? So you're starting with the Exit 12. It's our pale ale. It's our standard pale ale. Nice, easy drinking crowd pleaser. We have a little bit of caramel malt in it to give it a little bit of maltiness. And uh, just Centennial and Cascade hops. Pretty standard. I say, I'm feeling that malt very forward with yeah. this. Yeah, it's it starts more of off. a malty pale ale as yeah. opposed to a hoppy pale ale. I say, normally I'm getting the hoppy pale ale. Right. This isn't yeah, so good. much of a hoppy pale ale. Right. It, it ends really too, it's very rounded out at the end. Yeah. But nice, light drinking. Yeah. I can have a bunch of these throughout the day. Nice yeah. reminder of exactly where you can find it too. It has some, a little, little bit of flavor, you know, yeah. it just doesn't taste like water. Exit yeah. 12, and you yeah. know exactly where you're going when you're we taking exit 12. We try to throw some names in that have something to do with Homer, yeah. you know, to keep that small town feel. And that's, that's right there. We got visitors off exit 12 on Route 81. You got the beer, you got the shirt. Yeah. You know exactly where you're heading. All right, what we got next here? So that's our newest IPA. It's called Negative Ions. It's a pretty bold IPA. It's 8%. Oh yeah, Great really smell. for an 8% though, it doesn't feel like that at all. It does not feel like that at all. This is Eldorado and Styrene oh, okay. Cardinal. We got better efficiency with that brew than I was expecting. It wasn't designed as an 8%er, but it, it just, that's the way it came out. We had really good efficiency and it 
fermented out really well, so. It's not a boozy 8%, no. that's for sure. Right. Once you hit the 8 too, it ends up starting to get boozy. Too. Yeah, we don't like not that. Not at all, we definitely don't not like at that. all. So. And the smell is incredible, it almost smells juicy. Yeah. Like, like you're just gonna have a glass of orangey grapefruit yeah. juice, well, that's, something like that. That's, that's, uh, that's great. That's what the guy that we deal with at uh, New York State Hop Scale said. He suggested that and he said straight up orange juice. Yeah. yeah but it really isn't that over, it's not like, an, like a powerful kick. It's really it ends up being like a nice hazy IPA here. And I mean, I could, this is, this one would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm driving. So this is definitely, yeah. definitely the one. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It's really, really good. good. Yeah. On to the next one here. So that's our cries of the carrots. That's our seasonal. It's, uh, it's actually got shredded carrots in the mash. It's got carrot juice in the fermentation. So you're going Cinnamon, for a little allspice, cake. and um, oh, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting. It it almost does though. It has a little bit of sweetness that I'm like, I think you had to say carrot cake for it to be on my head. But like, it it really ends. That's that's interesting. Yeah, it does you get you get that carroty flavor? I feel like it sits on okay. your tongue at the end there. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that was our alternative to pumpkin beer. We weren't interested in making a pumpkin beer. You see, beer. that's kind of what I'm getting. That is a little bit of the vibe I'm getting. Is yeah. like a the type of what it has the same color to a lot of pumpkin beers. Right. Pumpkins normally maybe a little bit more orange than this, a um, little bit more, a little darker as well. But I feel like at the same time, I like I'm kind of getting that little bit of pumpkin vibe with the this. cinnamon, like you said, yeah. that spice cinnamon that you put in. Spice. It's kind of like you decided. You were looking at a fork in the road. Do you go standard pumpkin or a different type of yeah, fallish beer? Yeah. This is a really good choice. Pretty sure, if I'm thinking back correctly, this is only the second time we've ever had a carrot style beer. And that was our first, one of our first episodes at Farmhouse. We didn't have that on the No, episode. that's right, we didn't yeah. even try it on. This is the first ever carrot beer we've had on this an episode. Is really, really, this really is really, really good. good. Yeah, that'll be did you expect this one to come out the way it did? Like, I feel like when you put oh carrots God. in yeah, something, that's, that's gonna no, be like, he didn't. Oh, I, I, walked in, I walked in the brew room and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw up. This smells, <laughs> this smells disgusting. I go, I can't believe this. He doesn't this. like carrots at all. I, I don't like carrots. I like, holy cow, this, this smells like crap. And then I, I, I try, after we got done with it, and I tried, I'm like, oh my God, this is delicious. <laughs> this, is, this is delicious. <laughs> this is really, really good. Last one here. Going dark. Is this the porter? Or? This is our Patsy's Quest. Yeah, that's the chocolate coconut. Chocolate coconut porter. That's nicely, it's kind of like, it's, that coconut there is more on the finish. Yeah, but it ends it's, up. It's a little subtle. Yeah, with the coconut, but a lot of people don't like the overpowering coconut yeah. sometimes. I'm not a big coconut fan, so I'm, I'm kind of thankful that's a little more subtle. Right. But it works coconut. so well coconut. in this beer. I like coconut, but I don't have a lot of coconut in beer, yeah. so. I was curious how this was going to come out. When I was reading it too, I was just like, I wonder how that's going to taste. You know, how is the coconut going to be? How much did you put in there? And how much, you know, is it going to come out in this beer? And it doesn't come out, it comes out, I feel like the perfect amount, the right amount you want it to come out because you want to still be able to taste it. But you don't want, I mean, right, you don't want overpowering. When you're throwing chocolate in there too, it's going right. to end up changing everything you're too. Right. You're not going to, it, it will help balance out that whole combination. So, and I feel like it is. It's chocolate forward. It ends very coconutty, but it, it's really nice balance. I really this is this is great. Yeah. I feel like it's what a mounds bar should be. Yeah, 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 like yeah, those yeah. are, in my opinion, the terrible. These were, uh, <laughs> but this is really <laughs> freaking good. A couple people say that actually. It tastes, when it comes out just right, it tastes like a mounds bar. Yeah, <laughs> a better better version in my mind. I'd rather drink you know a bunch of these than even have one mounds bar personally. <laughs> but that's just me. That's one of our beers that we've actually gone. Couple different directions with with which what kind of coconut to put in it, and yeah. we we played around with that recipe a, a few times already now. I don't know, two or three times at least, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was you know anywhere from regular coconut to toasted coconut to yeah. coconut coconut extracts to whatever's, and just just trying to get it the way we want to make it forever. And we just I think we've got it now. This is awesome. This is really good. What a nice selection you got here, and I got a lot more on tap. I think I might have to try one more off camera, there but still, <laughs> thank you guys yeah, so much. Yeah, I really appreciate for coming. Really. So, uh, we're shaking hands here. I know. Yeah, you know. Right. We'll, we'll wash we'll yeah, yeah. Everybody's very friendly. Um, they welcome. You feel great when you're here. How can somebody get your beer? So I know you guys like new, but if there's a uh, a restaurant around here, say someone's trying to come find your beer, are you guys doing any distributing yet? Or how can they get a hold of you? How can a restaurant get a hold of you to get a keg? 
So restaurants have reached out to us before. We're, we actually have a website and we can, they can reach out that way, but um, uh, we're on social media, of course, too. And, uh, but uh, restaurants have been asking for six stills or sometimes half kegs of beer, and we've been accommodating them. Of course, of course the restaurants now are being really cautious on yeah. how much beer they're buying because they're not sure what's happening. They're getting slow and, and whatnot. So, um, but we have been supplying restaurants in this area, and actually, um, we've had our beer as far as Rochester, right? It's been at uh, Nine Maidens Brewery. Yep, they've had us on tap there. We've been in all the restaurants pretty much in Cortland, a lot of them anyways. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, and in Homer. Yeah, this summer we took a little pause with that because we were having a hard time keeping up with our own demands here. Right. But like he said, this fall and winter, now that we have a little extra, some of the other places are being a little cautious. When we, we collab with Trelevin Wines, so Trelevin Wines and King Ferry, we carry their wine here and they have us on tap over there, so they have, we have our, our beer on tap there sometimes. So that wraps up our day here at Homer Hops Brewing. Thank you so much to Jason, Sean, Wally, everyone here at Homer Hops. I mean, this has been incredible. Awesome beer. It's awesome to see these guys finally have a tap room open after doing so many years of just brewing and distributing. They got a place here that's gonna be awesome post-COVID. Yeah, they went through a lot to get this place ready and it is absolutely gorgeous. Well worth the stop in here. No matter where you're heading, it's worth the trip. Right off exit 12. Absolutely, it's everywhere. Be sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, everywhere you can, so you can see where our journey takes us next on What's on Tap. Cheers. All right, let's go off the stage. <laughs>